Well, what is up everyone? Welcome back to our lawn and you are getting excited about starting your journey into lawn care. So you go to the Home Depot, you go to your local hardware store and you go into that lawn and garden section and you see just a wall of fertilizer. It's primary colors. There's pictures on the bag with beautiful lawns. There's numbers all over the place and you just stare at that like what the fork is all of that. How on earth are you supposed to understand what any of that is, what any of it means and what you're supposed to use and how? Well, you're in the right place because this video is a part of a series I'm doing this year on my channel where I'm going through every basic thing I can think of that a new homeowner or someone who's new to lawn care is going to need to know in order to be able to get started and responsibly take care of their yard and make it beautiful and everything that you've ever wanted. And in this video specifically, we are looking at fertilizer bags and helping you understand what all of the information on there means and how you can use that information to pick a product for your lawn. So first of all, you go in there and what do you see? There's just the wall, like I said, of primary colors. There's pictures of beautiful yards on the bag. There's a bunch of terms on the bags. There's weed and feed, there's weed preventer, there's winterizer, there's starter, turf builder. First of all, and since I mentioned it, take any bag that says weed and feed, pick it up and throw it into the nearest garbage where it belongs. Stop buying that stuff. Secondly, and most importantly, all of the words on that bag, on the front at least, are just marketing. Fun fact, you can put winterizer on your lawn anytime. It doesn't have to be winter. So we're past the initial shock and being overwhelmed of being in that aisle. Now on the bag, we're gonna first look for three numbers and they're separated by dashes. Those three numbers represent the percentage of the contents in the bag that are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those are the three macronutrients of the plant and they're the most important nutrients that the plant uses to grow and remain healthy. This isn't a video where I plan to make fertilizer recommendations, but if you haven't gotten a soil test, I would recommend sticking to bags that have the first number, the nitrogen content, higher, and then zero phosphorus and a lower potassium or even zero potassium number as well. Just stick to nitrogen until you know what's in your soil or what you need, if anything, before you start throwing other stuff down. And as we're going through this bag, if you're finding the information useful to you, it would be greatly appreciated if you'd give a little chin scratch to the like button down there. He's a good boy. He likes it. Let YouTube know, let me know that the content that I'm providing to you here is helpful and useful for you. The other two important numbers that are often going to be on the front of the bag are the weight of the bag, and it will quite often make a recommendation on the total square feet that the bag is in. Now, again, before you apply anything, you have to know how big your yard is. And if you do not know how big your yard is, I got a video up over in the corner that you can click and go over how you can use Google Earth or maybe a local county extension service to measure your yard just right from the computer or phone that you're watching this video on. You can even do it from the toilet where you're probably also watching this video from. And then we flip the bag over or we look somewhere else on the bag and we're gonna get it and we're gonna get to the official label of the bag. And so the label again is going to tell us the percentage of the contents in the bag that are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. However, we're gonna pick up some additional information as well, such as what percentage of the nitrogen is slow release versus fast release. Quite often the fertilizers in big box stores from say Scott's or the bargain brand are gonna be some combination of readily available and slow release nitrogen. Just it smooths out the curve of the growth response that you're gonna get from the fertilizer also defends against a little bit of user error with slower release nitrogen. And then it's also going to list any micronutrients more often than not, that's going to be iron, sulfur, and then maybe manganese and magnesium. Maybe you get some calcium as well. And then it's going to give you the source of where all of those materials come from. So since we're talking about the macronutrients, I do believe this is a good time to talk about what they do in the plant and some of the sources and how they function and how you can use that information to determine what fertilizer you want to buy. So the first is nitrogen, and that is the most important nutrient to drive plant growth. It makes up about three to 5% of a healthy grass plant is just nitrogen. If you don't have enough nitrogen, you don't have a green, healthy, and growing plants. If you have too much nitrogen, you have a plant that is sacrificing root growth and shoot growth for vertical growth, and you're potentially increasing the disease incidence for that plant as well. Now, when it comes to sources of nitrogen, there's like a billion. They span from synthetic to organic, higher salt index, lower salt index. However, the most common are going to be your biosolids like malorganite, um, and then we get into ammonium sulfate and urea, as well as a number of other organically occurring nitrogen sources. Generally, for you, all are going to be fine. Something you can consider is 
if you know your soil's pH and it's a little bit higher, you can focus on fertilizers that have the nitrogen source being ammonium sulfate. Although that will not correct your soil pH, it can assist in correcting that pH if you're doing other things like sulfur applications, etc. And then the organic and other slow release fertilizers can be beneficial in times of stress when we really don't want to push a lot of top growth, but we still want to continue to feed the plant. However, be careful if you're relying a lot on organic and a lot on slow release fertilizers, those can start to build up and they do become most readily and most quickly available when temperatures are highest. So if you have, say, a cool season lawn that is under a lot of stress and you've been using heavily malorganite or other organic slow release type fertilizers, those are all going to start to become available when the plant is under stress and push a lot of growth that we don't necessarily want. So let's not get too carried away with the slow release stuff either. Really just a good balanced nitrogen fertilizer application over the course of a year, you're going to be good to go. And then phosphorus, in terms of what phosphorus is doing in the plant, is basically providing the plant with a means to transfer energy for metabolic processes. And something about phosphorus is it can be used repeatedly by the plant as it can transfer around and be used wherever it's needed. And it also tends to hang around in the soil. So your phosphorus requirements for an application perspective can be quite low and it is definitely the lowest of the three macronutrients in terms of what you need. Especially if you're somebody who's mulching your clippings back into the ground, phosphorus can remain pretty stable for a long time. Phosphorus deficiencies tend to show up as a reddening of the leaf blade, generally reduced growth, and overall thinner grass blades. There are a couple different sources of phosphorus, but if I'm honest, I'm just not smart enough to understand what they are or understand what the difference is between them, so I'm not going to worry about it here in this video. And then the last macronutrient that I mentioned is potassium, and potassium is the second most important nutrient in the plant. And basically what it is doing is it's key in the synthesis of plant components and for either regulating or catalyzing several of the physiological processes of the plant. If you have potassium deficiencies, those tend to result in increased respiration and transpiration. So the plant is both using and losing more water at the same time. Overall, you're going to see reduced stress tolerance and again, increased disease instance. In terms of sources, the most common for potassium is going to be muriate of potash or potassium chloride. Um, and then some other common ones are potassium sulfate and potassium nitrate. Now those can be helpful as they're also going to provide sulfur and nitrogen if you need those. Also, those are lower salt index sources. So if that's something you're concerned about, if you have a higher salt content soil or you're worried about burning, that higher salt content in the fertilizer can cause some issues. But realistically, you're going to be fine with just about anything. And so there we go. Kind of a first brief introduction to what's on the bag and then a little bit more introduction into some of the, the more in-depth concepts and an understanding of what the nutrients are doing in the plant and how to use that information to assess what it is that you might need. And this video will serve as a primer for several videos that I'm going to have coming up in this series. Hopefully those start to be outside as spring is here and you don't have to keep looking at the basement behind me. Uh, but if this is helpful, again, like the video, subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when those videos do come out subsequent in this series. I'm going to continue to try my best to provide this information to both the beginner as well the more advanced type homeowner that wants to have a putting green in their yard. So if you have made it this far, I really do appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.